So coming from that, the first thing that we do is try to understand what uh, we were not doing like that actually beginning. So we will go in and we will say, okay, look, uh, we have this CSR program and hence we will do this, this, this for you. There are standard things like we'll do a school. Well, they say we don't need school. We don't study. So then we'll say, okay, so, so coming from that angle, they become violent because they think that you are taking their land. You are telling them how they should live. You, you, you are telling them, you are preaching to them and you are taking away their resource. Now there is this, this kind of uh, creates a dissonance and an uh, atmosphere of mistrust. So what we have slowly evolved, we quickly evolved though, we don't have much of choice. Uh, the first is to understand how, what they need. Instead of telling them, first you understand what they need and then try them to, like in morning, uh, the one Mr. Vinayak was talking about, like uh, you talk to them, you have a discussion with them so that they realize what they need, that's more important. And uh, after that, you have a budget and then you try to make it sustainable. Uh, for example, you, you can give them a school, but if they don't study, uh, you can't do much. Uh, so instead of, and so I'll give a specific example, suppose you go to health, then you try to give health to them. What we figured out that they don't want any health thing for them, but for their cattle. So these are the four or five things. So first of all, you have to form committees and things like that, where, so that you, you, you identify a few people who work with few people from their side. You identify the decision makers from their side and take them along and make them believe that it is their decision. Then you invest. So that way it remains for a long time. And to bring them to a kind of stability, which they normally... Very, very interesting. Uh, Manish, uh, if you really look at it, your experience of working in the mountain regions and of course working with uh, EBTC, uh, the European, European Business Technology Center and uh, looking at some projects on CSR implementation or ideas, well, what do you think was the key to success of creating a powerful partnership or creating a great implementation program? Yeah, I think, wonderful. Uh, first of all, looking at uh, CSR, is that's where we can start with that, is that CSR alone actually mandates the companies to look at their 2% because it's been mandated by the, by the government. And uh, if you only look at the 2%, obviously you cannot plan anything of scale which will actually have an impact. So uh, what I've been working with is a couple of projects which actually work at a national scale, which would actually enable companies to sort of pool in their stuff for particular geographies of their interest to affect that landscape and get their, in effect, uh, let's say, uh, pa pa pass their CSR test. Because, I mean, in essence, it's passing a CSR test. Whatever the government is saying in terms of this 2% is to, cert, uh, to create a impetus for corporates to participate in the social thing. But corporates alone cannot solve any problems. If they actually start replicating the structures that already exist on the developmental scale, rather than pooling and plugging into it, then there'll be just too many things that are done at too many places. It'll be like the million mutinies now and nothing later. So like if you can sum up million interventions at a district level, but if you go to the state level and you sum it up there, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the thing that I actually was looking at in terms of uh, so-called chasing impact, was to see if we can actually create something which will enable a company to plug into, which will be a much larger uh, agenda and enable them to solve that particular problem. How could you do this? This is a very powerful idea as to what you're saying and suggesting. Uh, any example that you would have seen of this sort uh, happening? Or I mean, Currently we are actually working on an initiative, uh, I'm going to talk about the one that we're currently working on, it's called Health Phone. Uh, it is a very simple idea. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people have had it. The point is actually to take that the communication that the government of India has been trying to do with its own resources. In this case, it's a health-based thing, so it was done by MWCD with Amir Khan as uh, the ambassador and uh, for talking about nutrition-related videos, which uh, the government of India tried to actually uh, put in place into the, the communication through communication media, including television, to uh, and spending 200 crores, but they did not get any return on that. So what we are doing is taking the cellular channel at one level, taking the social media channel at the another level, and then supporting the Anganwadi workers and the frontline health workers as well at, uh, through a 
virtually a health phone, but it's a health phone card really, which can uh, enable them to actually have the knowledge, which can motivate one, the woman who is actually pregnant, to understand what are the key critical things that she needs to do or watch out for, like 25% more eating during uh, when she's pregnant, colostrum, exclusive breastfeeding for six months, and then introducing supplemental feeding after six months in a particular way. All of this the government has done. The government has funded that, but they just haven't got it to where it needs, it's needed. So this project actually enables that to happen. And things get added in different geographies depending on the sponsors and their interests and their uh, CSR policies, because each one has man mandated that they'll do certain things. Somebody's interested in doing leprosy. And so how do you add on to health phone? And you can do that as well. So very interesting, Manish. So well, what you're effectively saying is that how do we use technology for really creating impact and creating models or uh, looking at things, right? Yes, it's, it's technology. This is actually OK. Somebody will come back to me and say, OK, you've actually now shown the videos to, to the caregivers. But, and so the impact is somewhere still later. It's true. Because, I mean, but the point is that if you did not show the videos, you've done nothing up to now. I mean, so if, if the entire health system of the government of India is running on one Anganwadi worker, one ANM, and one frontline uh, ASHA volunteer, then it's running on a pinwheel. I mean, it's, it's too small to actually support a system like that. But, but so we're just providing them that support and providing, continue to provide different ways of actually making them more aware of what they can do with technology. So Deepa, coming to you, uh, in fact, what Manish is saying is one end of the spectrum in terms of using mobile technologies and things. And when you talk about PVR, you, you actually are able to actually have an impact, which is stunningly big with a larger set of audience at one point in time. And how are you really looking at CSR implementation, CSR partnerships? Because you are doing something That's which right. can be very effective and very, very scalable over a period That's of time. Right. So actually, we started uh, the initiative sometime, you know, we were the early adopter in 2005 and six when actually, you know, the company PVR became a listed company. And that's the time, actually, the promoters were very keen that how probably, you know, at that time, we were really sitting on a number of 100 to 200 <coughs> crores, which is fairly a very less number to start off with a CSR funding plan. So it was a very challenging moment for us to basically look at the revenue in which the company was sitting, look at the model, which is PVR, per se, which actually operates almost nine months in a year, because mm -hmm. that's the time and period of the films which you actually get in our cinemas to make sure that you bring a program which is extremely sustainable for all of us to interact with 80 million consumers who come to our cinemas. So we were, uh, you know, I mean, traditionally, you know, at that time, it's always um, mostly the philanthropic way of getting associated with the community comes very naturally from a brand. But we were uh, very keen that we should work with the society, especially with the children who are around these urban, infrastructure, the real estate where we are. So we had actually, you know, I mean, if you look at Delhi and NCR, per se, there are around a lack of invisible children who are around these urban infrastructures, who are mm -hmm. begging, who are rat picking, oh. who are visible, yet invisible for all of us to attend and deal with. So our very structured way to reach out was to basically create a program which doesn't sound like a CSR more so in terms of funding, but looks from the point of view of how we can create a value through a brand of PBR get everyone together through PBR NIST, which means we worked with the Market Traders Association, we worked with the government, we ensured that each center which is created is created in association with all the partners who are around in the center rather than calling it as a single-handed program between us and, uh, us and the NGO. So the NGO, of course, turned out to be, again, finding it easy to really work on the children rather than actually looking at partnerships. And PBR Nest was very carefully trying to relate with these partnerships to give them the long-term credibility to the investments of all of us who are getting involved. The second very important program is because we are a real estate brand, physical in um, the urban infrastructure, as well as in tier two and tier three, it was very relevant that we are a 500 screens and hence how do we actually use the largest cinema space, which is the real estate of screens which we have. And we wanted to do something, again, very organic through the children of India. And we have a platform called CineArt, which is cinema and art for social convergence, where basically behavioral change is one aspect. The leadership program is one aspect which we wanted to work with the children, where children would actually work on developmental issues throughout the year and come out with their own original films, which later on get screened in PVR and goes back to the schools for their curriculum. 
So that's the way we wanted to use our physical space as well as our CSR funding in building initiative which is around PBRs and MAS. No, th this is very interesting as an example. And <coughs> But can you just tell me as to how this could actually be scalable as a model? Because you are limited to say 500 sc uh, screens. I'm sorry for saying that, but the yeah. question is, the market is too big and the kind of impact this kind of medium can have is far more gargantuan than a lot of us could anticipate. So how, how do you think this can get scalable over a period of time? How others could follow you? Or how we can actually create partnerships within your domain itself that this could actually be replicated across the board? Yeah, so you know, looking at the, the number of 500 screen and a physical presence of 106 cinemas in around 40, 45 cities and making sure that you're, you're actually covering the tier two and three pretty well, uh, it's about the industry which is to evolve. So actually if you look at India per se, we have just 2,000 multiplexes. So which means 2,000 screens and the owners of multiplexes. So it's about connecting with all of them, making sure we popularize this program and make this as a platform for all of us to kind of take and enable the entire behavioral change program. Like for example, we had this morning the session by Dr. Vinayak on a Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. Now how do you basically build a Swachh Bharat Abhiyan if you don't involve behavioral change in community which is right there actually watching cinemas with us. So we've come out with a design and a concept which is called SAF, which is connecting with the society, which means a swatch and safe and friendly spaces with children. Which So it has to be unique, it has to be designed well, it has to be scaled, it needs partnership as you mentioned, but at the same time we need to collaborate with other multiplex operators as well as the industry to make sure that we can kind of uh, you sure. know, reach out broadly on this. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, Mr. Reddy, uh, so if you really look at your foundation, uh, how are you really looking at working with people and what kind of partnerships are you really creating over a period of time? And how do you actually do away with this whole huge impetus of creating marketing-based CSR projects or whatever, which, which become doing things wherein you just do something and advertise it so much or whatever and you put it into your budget of CSR and stuff? So if you see that uh, SRF Foundation is, in a, is it playing a dual role. One is as an NGO on its own since 1982. And the second thing as a CSR, I'm the SRF company. So SRF is a manufacturing company. So the 2% has come just now last year. But before 2% came, but last 32 years, we have been doing a lot of checkbook charity philanthropy till 2009, apart from the Aninda Shiram schools in Delhi and Gurgaon. So in 2009, we started doing programs on our own directly at the ground level. When we began our journey, there a place called Mewat close to Gurgaon, 50 kilometers away. So where we adopted the government schools, or 50 government schools, we used to transform them as a model schools like the Shiram schools in Delhi and Gurgaon. So how can we create these schools as model schools by way of supporting the government system, not duplicating, but trying to fill the gaps. So in this process, we are alone when we went there. And today, there are many partners are with us, like IBM is with us, Snyder, Tetra Pak, Coca-Cola, Singapore Management University, Care India. So all these people joined with us in due course of time, seeing that uh, what we have been doing there and what they wish to do. There is synergy between the, uh, the partners. And together, we are creating synergic value by way of uh, building the partnerships in a short span of time and large scale. And our model is like that. Uh, ours is like a holistic <coughs> educational transformation. And, you say, and also, foundation acts like a platform. So if somebody is coming, we don't have any marketing division, our fundraising division, we don't go to anybody, just come and work with us. So we focus energy on the execution part. So that execution capability, and the credibility of the organization, and the quality of the service delivery, these three things attracting the people to us as a partners. So how do they know about us? So forums like this, we're sharing what we have been doing that, and through our communication channels, just simple like that, and we do the program. So that is how we started our journey there in Mehwath. Today, we gone beyond Mehwath to the entire Haryana. There is another model <coughs> called the teacher training model, covering all 21 districts of Haryana. So where we don't implement directly anything there, through government channel, training the cadre of master trainers within the system, covering 21 districts of Haryana, and reaching 315 schools. That is another model is going on. The third one is, across our plant location, we have nine plant locations in India, where last year we scaled up the program beyond Mehwath to these nine locations, where we found the CSR councils. We talk about shared value and all those things. So though we don't, as a foundation, we don't have any staff there, permanent paid staff kind of thing. We are engaging the, the passionate SRFites, you know, <coughs> by choosing those people from CSR council, led by CSR champion. We groomed them last one year how to plan and do the things. So already they have the presence there. 
they have connections to the community, relationship with the government department, connections with the vendors. Just they need little support about how to plan and execute the CSR programs. That is the role we, as a SRF foundation we played last one year, training them four times, exposing to the MAVAT program what you have been doing, like, that is what's going on. In fact, I did hear you saying that you're working with some very interesting <coughs> enterprises. Yeah. Right? What is the key to success for really work, having a working relationship with them? Because yeah. a great successful CSR project is always going to be about many people coming together. It's not going to be one single person and yeah. pouring in the money. It is about getting people together. So if you see that, the partners are various kinds. One is the corporate partners. Government is a partner. The local community is a partner. Our panchayat is a partner is there. And the government is there. So when you say corporate partners, what they look for, especially when they work with an NGO, they look for the branding. Look for the employee participation. Look for the quality of delivery of service. You know, time limit in the deadlines. So if you take care of these four things, they're more than happy with you. And they will, I'll give you an example of IBM. We started the program in Mavath uh, four years back. Now the IBM collaboration has gone beyond the Mavath to all other locations. How they gone? Because we are taking care as a customer, you know, taking care of the customer delight, the partner delight. That is the key for the success of the program. Like Coca-Cola. Now we have the collaboration with the UN Habitat. So seeing the, what the program we did with Coca-Cola and Tetra Pak and <coughs> Nevar, the UN Habitat has come forward to support the toilet program in Madhya Pradesh. That is another example I'm giving that. When you come to the government department is concerned, if you go to the government asking some money, if you, as an NGO go there, they look at you differently. So these people are here to for the money. So we don't ask any money from the government. We don't take single money from paisa from the government department. That is our strategy. Saying that the schools where we are working, if any support government has to provide, we ask them directly give it to school management committee, okay. SMC. We don't take any money to the SRF accounts kind of thing. So that gives a lot of credibility advantage working in the government department. So that is why we work with the government department. When you go to the communities, we say that, look, this is your school. Your children are studying here. This is your village. We are just from outside. We don't have any stake, like you, what you have supposed to be have. And we are here to support, a little bit extend our support to your school, if you come forward. So for example, I give you an example of uh, support my school program, SMS program, what we have been doing with uh, Coca-Cola and Tetra Pak and local government department and community. We say that we are here to create four kind of facilities, the toilets, the drinking water facilities, sports and library facilities. For which, if you want to create uh, sports facilities, the school ground should be leveled. So whose responsibility is it? We can't invest money for that kind of thing. So we leverage the local Narega funds from the government department. So that to panchayat, second thing. And to get drinking water facility, you create the toilet, overhead tanks, motor connection, all those things. But source of the water. So panchayat provides the water from the village to water connection, okay. storing the water. That is the contribution. Like library, they can provide a separate room for it. So like that, <coughs> we build that kind of you know, ownership or partnership at the local level with the community. That is how. So we have to work differently with the corporate, the government, and the community, and acting as a platform, as a facilitator. We can create some. Oh, great. So Mr. Vanchu, like, so we are coming to this very interesting thing that there has to be those platforms, partnerships, collaboration that needs to happen. So how does uh, your enterprise, that is the National Building Co Construction Company, uh, look at this? So basically, uh, I will share my experience regarding the implementation portion. We are doing a lot of activity in skill development, construction of toilets. Uh, we are constructing about 100 toilets across the country. We are basically a construction firm. We don't have a single spot, a single place. So we work right up to the northeast. And uh, we are doing a lot of activities, skill development, construction of toilets, um, uh, uh, night shelters, then uh, uh, providing ambulances, all various activities we are doing. Uh, like construction of uh, toilets, which we are doing, we have a, a model of uh, biodigester toilets. Uh, each model consisting for about basically for 150 girls, consisting of uh, two flat uh, uh, pits, one for special disabled child and a wash basin. So that is one uh, toilet unit. unit costing about 5 lakhs. So we are doing it across 100 toilets across the country uh, in various places, JNK, uh, Agartala, Rajasthan, and so on and so forth. Uh, that is one thing. The second thing is that regarding our skill development program, we are doing in um, remote locations like Bairaj, uh, then uh, Agartala, various places. So we have a model, we tender this activity and we normally do through the NSDC training partners. And we have got three basic, uh, one is every child has to got to have a Aadhaar card, attendance is by biometric system, and the agency selects the market rates. 
and they have to en ultimately ensure 75% employability. So on, on the basis of these three traits, uh, these three mandates, the skill development programs are done. We call it a skill and entrepreneurship development program. Recently in Barrage, we did a very good program. A girl there has, uh, she has um, uh, did an IT program and now she's doing the digitization of ration cards and she's earning herself 5,000 rupees. So, and the, this model is on the NSDC Facebook also. So, a lot of skill development programs we do. Uh, then uh, we have given ambulances, trying to connect in the local remote areas. We have worked in um, Savai Madhapur, District Kandar. As part of our DP mandate, we have to work in, after last year, we had to work in a backward districts. Now we have constructed two dispensaries and one school there. The dispensaries were very well constructed and they have been upgraded to a PC level. So that was one area we have been doing. Then in Delhi, we have been working with the Delhi Urban Shelter Improvement Board. We have constructed number of night shelters near, somebody must have seen opposite aims also, we have constructed one urban shelter board. And uh, besides in uh, remote villages, we have constructed these bus shelters connected with the, so that farmers or the villagers, they don't face difficulty while waiting for the bus stand. And these are the various activities that we are doing. Then uh, earlier also we did for Rashtri Swasti Bhima Yojana, we did uh, paid the premium for that. So a whole host of lots of activities we are doing. Achha, one more thing I would like to share with everybody here. We have got a, we try to do a sensitization program. Like all my CSR activities, I route it through my local HODs, the state HODs. So they should also be involved. Mm -hmm. We have done a special sensitization program for all at our all states, wherever we have our project units, because ultimately they should also be involved in whatever CSR activities we are doing. So, have you mandated people to spend time in CSR activities within the? We have not specifically mandated, but we have given the sensitization program because today or tomorrow they will have to be involved. We collect the proposals from our local HODs; they have to recommend it. So, they have also to be involved. So, what is what do you think is the scalability of your model if somebody has to replicate this? Scalability, it will definitely go up. As I said, people get involved. Uh, we get proposals from Assam. They say a, ver a veterinary ambulance is to be given in the, uh, in the reserve, forest reserve. So people come and they themselves give. Like in Agartala, we go get several proposals. Many of my HODs are very proactive. They send the proposals themselves. They say, okay, this activity is to be done. The school is working in a tribal area. The toilet should be done here. So that's how the people get uh, involved and well, build up the scalability. So before I open it to the questions to the audience, Munish, I have a question for you. So if you, if you really look at well, what we are hearing now is that there are these very interesting projects that actually happen and so on and so forth. But what do you think? How, how do we create business models which are scalable or create enterprises which are scalable or social enterprises which are able to solve the problems of the world? Because you've actually worked on both sides of the coin as a person who's been funding and as a person who's actually created something on its own. Yeah, yeah. I worked as a consultant, if you can believe it. Yes, that's where I started. But uh, basically, what, what needs to be done, you, have to, you really have to understand when you're setting up a model like this, the local space that you're working in and the impact space. And the impact space is not the local space that you are actually operating in. And what you want to impact, you have to actually use up. What, what nowadays goes around is saying a networked kind of an approach to see where and how you can actually make that ecosystem work for you. And I think that's the, the level of detail that you really need is actually understanding a problem. Yes, embracing the complexity, like our previous speaker said, but understanding that there are particular core elements which need to be there, which will fertilize the rest. And that's what we did with Health Phone. So we have success with, let's say, Vodafone supporting the entire program, uh, which is the telecom program, on their own, through their own spent on that thing. We have Google, Facebook, et cetera, coming on the social media side. And now you would say this is not just related to just rural India, it's not, because it's actually targeting women from age 13 to age 65, including mother-in-laws, mothers, et cetera, to say what should be given to the pregnant woman and uh, how should you be going about managing this thing and how you can get some advice and expertise from that particular thing. But there's also a key thing which I did not mention up till now, which is an incentive. Well, the government of India gives incentives as well. To make a toilet, you get so much money. And sometimes that is the only thing that people make toilets with. And some of the toilets that are made are not usable by you or me for very long. I mean, I certainly can't use them for very long because they're not made, made with that quality. And nobody ever bothers with that 
because it's being made in somebody else's house, because he's not making it. And it's the same thing here, is that we actually wanted the person who actually watched the four videos that, we had, that are basically the four key messages to get a credit for watching them. And so we, we actually did this with Vodafone, and they will give a 10 rupee credit online for the person who watches the four videos for the first time. We are, we are doing the same thing with the Anganwadi workers, which is where the health phone card is, which is what we are trying to fund at this point. Uh, and the Anganwadi worker should get an incentive, and we'll build it in, because I think the corporate sector can build it in, and uh, the government is actually providing the salary, which is good enough. Of sure. So uh, if we have some questions from the audience here, I would like to take it at this point in time, and then I'll go back to the panel again. So if you have some questions from the audience. Hello. Yeah, that's for Mr. Vanchu. Uh, Mr. Vanchu, I had a question. How do you shortlist these toilets? Like you talked about 100 toilets uh, all over the country, right? Yes. I, uh, I had a format. I asked from all the schools and all the uh, schools what all, whether they require the toilets, number of children, whether they will maintain it, whether do they have the funds. After they gave me those details, I appointed a third party to, for, to do the proposal ev uh, evaluation. And many, I selected say about 88 toilets, out of which I could shortlist only 48. Because many of them, they had the toilets. Uh, some places they did not have water, electricity, uh, space, and some places other PSUs were working. So uh, my experience was that out of almost, in the first batch, I, uh, I selected 88, my board approved 88 toilets, out of which I could only shortlist 48 toilets. But uh, you haven't looked at villages, you're looking at schools again for toilets. Schools in rural areas, right. especially girls' schools. Girls' schools. And um, <coughs> more, as I said, we have a biodigested toilet and we had a right. composite unit, biodigested toilet, comprising uh, right. basically for 150 girls. Right. And each toilet unit was costing 5 lakhs. So are you planning to increase that? I mean, We will do eventually. 100 toilets, that is a mandate we have to do. Right. Yeah. Uh, beyond 100 toilets, uh, can't say, only if the board approves. Okay. And, and second question I had for you, the night shelter that you were talking about, yes. is this because you, are, you had a building coming up there, that's why you set it up in Ames, or it was a conscious effort on your part? It was uh, both a conscious effort, plus in my last MOU, it was an important parameter. So we have a MOU with a DP, right. so the, uh, those night shelters had to be com constructed. So are these so, permanent in nature? Pardon? Are they permanent in nature? Yeah, they are permanent Permanent nature. You can have a look of okay. opposite Ames. There's a night shelter there. Okay. So about about five six places we have constructed in okay. Delhi. Okay. Thank you. So anybody else who would like to ask a question here? I will tell you my just. I'll answer you my question. There was a case. I'll see how this country operates. There is a case going on in the Supreme Court. I went to the advocate. I told them I will construct the um, night shelters across the country. But they were more interested in fighting the Supreme Court rather than telling me yes, these night shelters have to be done here. So that is a very strange. No, no, we have done all five, six shelters. So yeah. can, can we just go to the next yes. uh, question, please? Yes, uh, 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 very quickly. My name is Nilesh Arya. I'm from Indian Social Responsibility Network. Uh, we are a network building the CSR space in India. We have about 600 NGOs in our fold working across uh, different states. Now, uh, looking at the 2% mandated, uh, you know, when you translate it into amount, it is estimated to be more than 15,000 crores. Now, there are very few NGOs, you know, so-called branded NGOs, whom the corporate directly approach and give the work. Now, what about how they are going to absorb the 15,000 crores, which is impossible. So that means we need to create a system where we have uh, information on corporates, which areas they are interested in, as well as NGOs, you know, what the corporate requires from them in terms of uh, meeting their level of expectations. So how to do that? That is something I think we also need to uh, discuss about. Can I answer, so, can I answer this question? Hanji, very quickly. Uh, one minute. See, basically, uh, we don't believe, uh, we should not believe in philanthropy. It should be all project based. And if you have any project, you approach the corporate, tell them this is my requirement and uh, this CSR activity is to be done. And if the board approves, that particular board approves, the proposal ev evaluation will be done. And if the requirement is there, that work will be done. Uh, so okay. Mr. Mahapatra, you have a point uh, of view yeah, on this. I think uh, IICA is creating a website, has, has created by now, where all the corporate proposals will be uploaded. So there, there you will know uh, which corporate is spending how much money and in what kind of projects, because the projects have to be decided by the board of directors of the companies, so nobody else has any say on that. 
But after that, IICA is also empaneling a lot of uh, NGOs based on the parameters uh, that they have defined. I mean, transparency, accountability, experience, and other things. So uh, Mr. Chatterjee was telling me once that there are 33 lakh NGOs in India today. And so if you take, actually, the money is not too much. 15 to 16,000 16, crores for 33 lakh NGOs, it comes to around something like 10,000 rupees per NGO per annum, which is not much. So the money is not actually much. But they are trying to uh, uh, kind of a shortlist of NGOs who can take up this project. So data will be available on IICA website. Part of that must be available by now. I have not checked in the last two, three months. Sure. OK. Uh, Mr. Reddy, you had a point of view on this. Yeah. Already we completed one year of CSR execution as per the law. If you see, this is the time actually companies have to submit the reports, CSR reports, talking about. So far, whatever you are talking about, 16,000 crores, 15,000 NGOs, uh, companies, all those, is all assumption. Nobody knows reality actually how much money, how many companies are supposed to do that. So end of the September 30th, the six months time, so all companies have to submit the CSR reports. The IICE or Ministry of Corporate be ready with the consolidation analysis, all the kind of thing. You come to know actually exact number of the companies and where the money going, which sector is going, which part of the country is going. Then only you can say that you know a clear picture of the, the money availability, companies availability. When NGOs are concerned, the NGOs, one thing is that one is you, you, you yourself can register with the IACA or TIS or some other portals are there. At the same time, you have to do some kind of mapping. So where you are operate, what is your core strength, especially the theme and the geographical area. So once you map yourself, which are the companies working in that area and kind of thing, instead of just uh, uh, throwing the stone to every company, but you do some kind of research yourself first and zero down the companies which are working in that particular theme, zero down the companies which are in that particular area, then your success will be very high. Okay, so, but on the numbers here, sir, if we really look at the tax numbers, there is an expectation that the total money that is going to flow into the system is just about $3 billion, about 18 to 20,000 crores, not 50,000 crores as yeah. a lot of people end up saying. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, we have to really come to a close of the session. But before we close, uh, exactly one thing that you would like to suggest, that how do you make a great CSR implementation project? Half, 10 seconds, sir. Well, just find out what the market needs and gear up for that and have your partners ready and treat everyone as partners. That's number one. Number two, this is my another idea that I have personally, I'll take five seconds. Still now, this money that I am seeing as a CSR thing is a one-way flow. I was just thinking if an NGO can borrow money to set up the projects and then have some kind of a return mechanism through kind of the carbon credit certificates or something, if there is a mechanism as ROI. So that might be another mechanism which can be explored, but no, not now. Okay, very, very interestingly, we are starting something called the shared value certification for something enterprises. Like you can actually yeah, come yeah. and talk to us, yeah, right. and we see how we could uh, look yeah, at it. Yeah. Manish, uh, some... Okay, shared value certification is certainly one, I think, where you need to actually tell people what it takes to, uh, to collaborate and what, what they bring to the table and what they get from uh, the sharing of information exactly. and partnership. That's one. And the second thing, actually, more clearly is to actually understand uh, the, the <coughs> scales of where you're operating. If you are operating at a village scale, then you need to be very deep and very long in terms of there. Or if you are acting at a wider scale, then there are different sets of priorities and partners required. And dealing with government is obviously always important. Mr. Vanchu? I think uh, Ten seconds. Ba um, basically you must work in rural areas. You have to assess the real need is in rural areas. So rural so, communities. So yeah, rural, rural community, communities. Yeah. Mr. Reddy. So we have a mandate to work in the field of school education and vocational skills. But in the mandate, fulfilling the mandate, we think we are not alone. We follow the inclusive approach for inclusive growth, helping okay. as a platform. Deepa. Every CSR uh, brand comes with a very clear business model. So it's very clear that most of the brands, especially the CSR companies, would really like to keep their interest alive as well as while they're interacting with most of their stakeholders. So hence, uh, the right partnership the right identifying of projects and proposals, and making sure those designs are really visible for all of us to participate and bring difference. I think that will be very critical. Thank you. Us. Thanks a lot uh, for the panelists for joining us today. I think it was a wonderful session, please. Thank you. So kind of you. Thank you.